Lung cancer is one of those scary topics that few people want to talk about. We've got Dr. Jennifer Sullivan. She is Division Chief of Thoracic Surgery at GBMC. She will talk about it with us. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well, and I'm happy that I have you here because it can be obviously very scary. So we want to get to um, to the answers. And the first question really is, how common is lung cancer? Well, it's estimated this year in 2021 that every two and a half minutes, somebody will be diagnosed with lung cancer. Mm -hmm. And every day, 380 people will die of lung cancer, which is more common death rate uh, than breast, colon, and prostate cancer combined. Oh my goodness. I did not realize that. What factors increase someone's risk for developing lung cancer, especially when the numbers are that high? Yeah, we know that 80 to 90% of lung cancers are caused by cigarette smoking. Um, so it's, if you're smoking quit, <laughs> if you haven't started yet, which is really the best time to try to catch people as the younger generation, like don't start. Cause it's going to lead to so much trouble down the line after cigarette smoking. The second most common cause of lung cancer is radon, which is a naturally occurring odorless gas in the environment. Um, we're all exposed to it every day. In fact, if you go to the maryland.gov website, you can find a map of radon, um, exposure levels. And it, in, in the state of Maryland, and there are certain levels that are in the red zone, um, and it correlates to increased cancer risk. And so it's recommended that you get, I think every three years, your home should be tested for radon. So if your levels are too high, you need to vent your home out. So cigarette smoking and radon combined is even much higher risk. My goodness. And I, yeah. And after that, basically air, pollu you know, air pollution, breathing in chemicals, occupational exposures to asbestos silica, secondhand smoke. You know, if you're around people who smoke all the time and you're inhaling that, you're getting, you're getting some of the exposure as well. Yes. You know, and we don't think about that. I mean, like to think like, oh, I should actually think about the environmental causes and check this map to see that if I'm affected um, and knowing that there's areas in Maryland that are in the red zone, that is something definitely to pay attention to. So who should get screened for lung cancer? Is it blanketly everyone? Or if you've got some of these risk factors? Well, it's mostly related to smoking risk factors and the guidelines were actually just updated this year. And the update has allowed a million more people to get um, uh, recommendations for screening. Okay. So the ages are between the ages of 50 and 80, uh, because that's the highest times that we see lung cancer between the ages of 50 and 80. Okay. The pack year, so the amount of cigarettes you smoke and for how long you smoke, it's sort of like a multiplication equation. So we say 20 pack year smoking history. That's the newest update is 20 pack years. So if you smoke a pack a day for 20 years, you have a 20 pack year smoking history. Mm. If you smoke a half a pack a day for 40 years, you have a 20 pack year. If you yeah. smoke two packs a day for 10 years, you have a 20 pack year smoking history. Mm -hmm. um, and so having that long-term or high dose exposure to smoking. And then if you're recently still smoking, or if you have quit, but it's been less than 15 years since you've quit, then you still qualify for the lung cancer screening. And you are recommended to get it every year until you turn 80 or until you haven't been smoking for 15 years. And we know how hard it is for people to quit. So we don't want to malign them because we know that people are trying. But some of these alternatives that they might be trying might not be safe. So is vaping a safe alternative if they're trying to sort of wean themselves off of cigarettes? Right. So the honest advice I give to my own patients, because a lot of patients I see were trying to do surgery. If you're having a hard time coming off cigarette smoke, I say vaping is a good temporary solution mm -hmm. to kind of transition, but you ultimately should be transitioning off of that because vaping is still very new. We yeah. don't have time. It's going to take, it took decades, right? To say that smoking caused lung cancer. It's going to take decades before we can really say what's vaping doing, but we do know there are chemicals in vaping um, like that cause the artificial flavors that have led to lung diseases and, and other populations like, uh, uh, popcorn factories is a common phrase you'll hear, uh, where the artificial butter people that were in the popcorn factories got so much exposure to the chemical causing, um, artificial butter that they got, um, ultimately lung diseases. My goodness. So basically what I'm hearing is that if you do the vaping, it come off it eventually, if you're using it to transition off smoking, great but you got to eventually plan to be off it completely because long-term it is going to cause trouble. We just can't, we don't have enough time and data to tell you exactly what yet, but it's going to come out one day. So it's the lesser of two evils for right now, but still an evil. So pay attention. Um, where can we get more information? Uh, you can go to the uh, GBMC's main website, which is www.gbmc.org. All right, Dr. Sullivan, thank you so much for this really insightful information. It's very helpful and we appreciate that. We'll be right back with more Midday Maryland right after this. Stay tuned.